This is a journey of a person receiving a GS-13 program analyst job offer after three months of applying consistently on usajobs.gov. It started with an email I received last year. It was from a commission officer in the Army. He had nine years time in service. He was an armor and an intelligence officer. The email said he was focused on either a 0300 or an 1102 job series. And he was targeting GS-11 or GS-12. And this is a problem that a lot of us have. We undersell our experience because we don't know what we're eligible, what we're qualified to get. So many times, including myself, when I was making that transition, I looked lower on the GS grade. You hear so many people talk about, just get your foot in the door. And this is a fallacy. You do not have to get your foot in the door. What you do need to do is talk to people that are in the positions that you want. So if you wanna get into the government, talk to somebody who has a similar background and see what GS grade are they at? What do they recommend for you with your experience? They are much more likely to give you valuable advice if they have a similar background that you have. So we exchanged emails for a couple of days and we strengthened his resume. And this is make or break when it comes to government jobs, when you wanna get referrals, when you wanna get interviews, the resume, it has to be strong and it has to be relevant. Full disclosure, this was actually a course member. So if you're interested in getting assistance and attaining a government job, check out the course link in the description below. Once he had that strong, relevant resume, he agreed to apply four times a day for two months, consistently. No matter what was going on during that day, he was going to apply. And when it comes to job announcements, Sometimes you have to tweak the resume. If there are certain keywords mentioned in the specialized experience area and they're not in your resume, you have to go back, make those adjustments to ensure the resume is speaking to the job announcement. Five weeks after he started applying four times a day, that's when the first interview came. And about a week after that, he had a second interview. Both were virtual interviews. The first one was audio only and the second one included video as well. The next day, his references were contacted. Now this is a good sign, it's a good indicator that the agency has interest in you. And what you should be doing is letting your references know that hey, you should be expecting a call. An agency, the Department of Justice might be calling you this week. And you also want to gauge what is their impression of you. Do not give them references of somebody that's going to talk bad about you. Now, usually when the references are called, they're only asking a couple of simple questions. Did this individual work here? Did they hold this position? They're not going to really get into the character of how was he as a worker. About four weeks later, after that, he was extended a tentative job offer, which he accepted and which I encourage everyone to accept because you don't know how long it's gonna to take to hear back from different agencies. So if you get one, two, three different tentative job offers, go ahead and accept them all. The onboarding process took roughly two weeks, which isn't too bad, considering that you have to get your fingerprints done, you have to take your picture, you have to fill out background checks, credit checks. It didn't take that long for him, and he was able to negotiate his start date, which is called the EOD, the entrance on duty date. This was because he was moving his family to another location in order to accept the job. So the agency was willing to work with him to move that start date. Now you do not need to be a commission officer in order to get a GS-13. You don't even have to be in the military at all. You can come from the private sector and still attain a GS-13 or above. The three things that you have to do though, you have to strengthen your resume with relevant experience and you have to consistently apply every day. It's incredibly discouraging to get rejections and we take that personally. The Department of Treasury didn't want me. You have to detach yourself from that emotional response and continue to apply. You are getting indicators that your resume is effective. The indicators are you're getting referrals. And even better than that, you're getting interviews. If you continue to get referrals and interviews, then it's working. You just need to do more of the action. And the last thing is you have to practice interviewing. It doesn't matter how many referrals or how many interviews you go on, you, you still won't get the job unless you practice and become a better interviewer. And you know how to get better. Keep doing it over and over. Receive the feedback, make the adjustment, continue to practice, find friends, family, acquaintances, somebody that's willing to give you their time in order for you to build your proficiency. I have seen multiple times 
people from the private sector coming in as a GS-14, or military service members coming in as a GS-14 or 15. This is possible. Now, if you're struggling to identify what GS grade should I be targeting, one good place to start is look at your current salary. How much are you earning? Are you earning 80, 90,000, $100,000 a year? Take the amount that you're earning, pull up a GS pay scale for your local area, and then match it. What would you have to earn in order to continue to get the same salary? You also have to take into consideration when you're a government employee, there's, there's a 4% deduction for FERS. Now, you might not be aware of that. That's the pension. That's the guaranteed pension that you're locked in after five years. So take your salary now and add about 4 or 5% to that. And that should be a baseline on if you need the same salary. Some people are willing to take a pay cut. Some people are looking for a pay increase. But if you're willing to take the same salary, look at your current pay and add about 5%. Most people in the military or prior military, they're interested in either getting a government job or working as a defense contractor. And one of the reasons why I advocate for a government job is that you can buy back your military time. Now, most people do not retire from the military. In fact, only 20% actually retire. And if you look at enlisted, it's only around 15% stay in the full 20 plus years in order to get a pension. So if you're one of the 80, 85% who did not retire, then you can buy back your time. It doesn't matter if you spent three years in the Army or four years in the Navy or five years in the Marine Corps. It doesn't matter. You can buy back that time and that adds to the pension amount that you would be entitled to. Overall, to find what's best in your situation, you're going to have to talk to somebody. Talk to someone who has a similar background, has the same type of education, has the same type of experience, and then you'll be able to find what type of opportunities are out there for you. Now, if you want to know what is it like, what is it actually like to be a federal government employee on the day-to-day? -day? What are the pros? What are the cons? If that interests you, then I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.